Scoia'tael movement decks. They are insanely powerful. Are they the new meta? Let's take a closer look to find out. What's up everybody, it's Lids, and we are back for some more Gwent, the Witcher themed card game, and today we will be playing a new Scoia'tael movement themed deck. Now of course Scoia'tael has always had some cards that were capable of doing special things when they get moved around or move around opponents units, but there are certainly many new cards that are far more powerful at doing that type of thing with the new Way of the Witcher expansion. So, let's take a look at a Scoia'tael movement deck, and we'll try it out for ourselves. So the general theme of this deck is that we are going to be moving units from one row to the other, and in the process, either dealing damage to our opponent or boosting ourselves, maybe on occasion having some other beneficial effects. So we want to have as many cards that can do that movement from one row to the other, and as many cards that benefit when they get moved from one row to the other, even if they can't trigger that movement themselves. We will, of course, be playing as Scoia'tael here. They are the ones that benefit most from these movement cards, and they are the ones that have the most of the movement cards. We'll be using Guerrilla Tactics, so that way we can move our own cards and move opponents' cards. When we move our own, we'll get boosted. When we move opponents, we'll deal damage. So this will allow us to do even more movement. So we'll have Oniromancy first, and that is largely just for the flexibility of being able to play any card from our deck. It's never a bad option to include it in your deck. It just has a high provision cost. Then we have Gezras of Leda, and this is, I would say, the best example of what we're looking to do with the new movement Scoia'tael card. So... For Gezras, when we move from melee into the range row, we boost one of our own units by one. When we move from the range row to the melee row, we damage a random enemy unit by one. But when we have three or fewer cards in our hand, we will affect all cards in that row. So if we can move Gezras all over the place, then we will be dealing a ton of damage and boosting ourselves a ton as well. So this is the general idea of the entire deck, and this is the strongest card at doing it. Then I did throw in a few additional cards that are not necessarily with the Scoia'tael theme here, more so just cards that have really strong abilities like Dandelion Poet here. I'm a huge fan of being able to draw an additional card and play an additional card on our turn, so it was hard for me to pass this up when I saw that we did have the provision, but you could potentially swap them out and throw in something that is more in line with the specific movement-themed things that we are going for in this deck, but I think we have plenty of options later on in our list to do just that. Similar story here with Geralt Yurden. Just being able to reset an entire row is so often a great way to bail yourself out if you see that your opponent has done some crazy things in one row and you can reset it down and maybe steal around that way. So we'll include Geralt as well, but this is another card that if you wanted to go purely Scoia'tael and maybe even have Devotion, then you could certainly swap this out for another big Scoia'tael unit. Then we have Becker's Rock Slide, and this is just a ton of damage because a lot of the cards that we have in our deck at the moment will be dealing little bits and pieces to random enemy units, but it may not be targeted damage, so being able to focus on one specific enemy and likely take it out with this 8 damage here could be very helpful. Then we have Stiga Castle, which is the new location for Scoia'tael. It has resilience, so it will stick around from one round into the next, and when we play it, we can spawn a Scoia'tael unit of our choosing, either the Cat Witcher Adept, Cat Witcher, Cat Witcher Mentor, or Cat Witcher Saboteur, and these are certainly cards that we will be looking at closer in the future. Basically, all we need to know here is that it gives us the additional flexibility of playing a card of our choosing when we play it, and then also it has an order ability that allows us to move three units to the other row, and because we have units that are going to be benefiting from that, that means that it's another way of setting ourselves up. Then we have Brehan, who is another new unit for the Way of the Witcher. When we play him, we can destroy the rightmost unit on an enemy row with at least five units in it, so as long as it's crowded, we can destroy a unit altogether, so it's kind of like a Geralt of Rivia in some ways in that it is outright removal, though it is depending on exactly where units are placed. However, because we have so much ability to move cards around, we can set this up because whenever a unit gets moved, it moves to the rightmost position in that row. So if we, say, move a unit into a row with five or more units, then we can make sure that we are being able to target that one with the deployability here. And if we have three or fewer cards in our hand, then we can destroy the rightmost unit in an enemy row with only three units in it, so we get a little more flexibility in that case. Then we have Treant Boar, which is actually an older card, and this one is one of the original ones that benefits from getting moved around, so it can go back and forth between the melee and range row. When it goes from range into melee, it can damage an enemy unit. When it goes from melee to range, it can heal itself, and it has a cooldown of one, so we can change rows every turn. Then Gaetan is another one of the new Way of the Witcher cards. When we play him, we can move cards from the row in which we play him to the other row, 
and we can damage an enemy unit for every card that we move. And so, again, we're going to be moving a lot of units and dealing, in this case, random damage for all that movement. So, another reason why, yes, we can deal a lot of damage, but we want to make sure that we have a little bit of precise targeted damage to complement this in case there's one specific thing that we absolutely must get rid of. Then Selective Mutation means that we can draw a specific Adrenaline card of our choice from our deck, and we have a few of those. We've already seen one or two, but we have a few more that we'll see in a little bit. And then we can shuffle back a card into our deck, so this is a way of making sure that if we have a card that we don't particularly like, and we want to get a particular card, we can't choose from anything like, say, Oniromancy, but it is still a strong way to give us some additional flexibility, and it spawns some Witcher students in both allied rows, which are weak tokens, which in some ways might actually be a little counterproductive because when you have a row that is full of units, you actually can't do any movement in that row. And of course, we are focusing on the movement here. Next, we have Polly Dahlberg. And this is a unit that I'm a little bit on the fence about including. It does allow us to move a unit when we deploy it. Yes, it does have six strength, which is pretty high. Yes, but at six provision costs, it is somewhat expensive. And we certainly have other sources of applying movement. So I'm not necessarily sure that this is necessary to include him here. And you might be able to save a little bit of provisions by going with something a little bit cheaper and then upgrading somewhere else in the deck because this is just a fairly common ability. Then we have Milena, and this is a good example of precisely what I would argue is an upgrade relative to Polly in that she can move a unit from one row to the other every turn. She may not have quite as much strength as him, but still I think that all in all, maximizing the amount of movement that we have is going to make this card significantly better. Then we have Rock Barrage. This is another special card which deals a sizable amount of damage with four and does move a unit to the opposite row. So that way we can deal damage, yes, but also potentially set up a few other cards with the movement. Then we have Doblathana Sentry. And this is interesting because it doesn't do the movement itself. However, it benefits when other cards get moved. So when we played in the melee row, that means that we will deal damage to any enemy unit that changes rows. Whereas if we played in the range row, we will boost units whenever they get moved. So you do need to do a little bit of prediction work here to figure out which one you think you're going to be doing more of, boosting yourself or damaging the enemy. But I think we'll have enough of both those things that in either case, it should certainly work. Then we have the Dryad Matron. This is another card that has been around for a while. So is one of the early cards that benefited from getting moved. At the end of our turn, it will move to the rightmost spot and boost the allied unit to the left by one. So that means that we want to put it on a row with other units that move, in which case it will always be switching positions with other cards and making sure that it is always doing a boost because otherwise what happens is she moves from left to the right once, boosts a unit once, and then stays there and doesn't do anything else. So this is definitely a card that benefits most from other cards moving around it so that it can always continue to move to the right and continue to boost one more card. Then we have Cat Witcher, which is one of the new cards, one of the ones we could create with our new location card. So at the end of their turn, it will move from one row to the other, and it will damage a random enemy unit on the opposite row by one. And technically, that is damage on the opposite row from the one that the Cat Witcher is moving into, not the one that it is moving from. And this is another unit that has Adrenaline. That means that if we have four or fewer cards, then it'll be two damage rather than just one. And so this is another card that we could draw into with Selective Mutation if we so choose. Then we have the Cat Witcher Saboteur, and this will move an enemy unit to the leftmost position in a row. Most of the time, movement will move all the way to the right, so this is a little bit different in that way. And it will damage it by one for every card that it passes. So for crowded rows, when there's a card that's far to the right, we can move it all the way to the left and maybe take it out altogether in the process. Then we have the Cat Witcher Mentor. So when we play this card, it will boost itself by the number of cards in a row. Of course, we will have a lot of units jumping back and forth from one row to the other, so we'll need to be mindful of that. But for the most part, this should be a fairly simple way of boosting what starts out as a one strength card into much higher than that. And then if we play it when we have four or fewer cards in our hand, then that means that it will also get boosted whenever we play a card. Then we have the Vriant Dragoon. This is another one of the early cards that benefited from movement. It moves an enemy unit to the other row or moves an allied unit to the other row. One thing to note about this is that it is slightly different from, say, Milena's ability, which is an order that she can use every turn, whereas this is just, you use it once and then it's done. Then we have a Cat Witcher Adept, which is another one of the new Witcher Cat School units. If we play in the melee row, we'll give an enemy unit bleeding for the duration equal to the number of units in that row, so we want to play it and damage a unit that is in a crowded row. Or if we play in the range row, then we can do basically the opposite. Instead of dealing damage, we'll be giving vitality to an allied unit equal to the number of units in that row. 
So we'll want to play late enough in a round that there are enough units to increase the amount of bleed or the amount of vitality that we're giving, but not so late that we don't have enough time for those to take effect. So those are all the cards in the deck. We have used all the provisions in this deck, which does limit the amount of changes that we can make. But as I was saying before, there are a few cards here that I could certainly see swapping out for other ones if you feel like you have personal preferences. And you could play this deck in either the standard or plus one seasonal event. Like I was saying, you want to be careful with when you do have a row that is entirely full of units, then units can no longer move around. And that is, of course, a big handicap for us because that is where we are getting most of our boosting and most of our damage. So spawning an extra copy of every unit can make us more powerful as long as we don't fill one of those rows. Let's try it out here. Okay, so going up against Skellige. We'll see what we get for our starting hand. And this is a good early card to play. Getting the location as well. We have some damage here. We have Geralt Yordan. Don't love Polly, as I was saying before. Dandelion does give us the ability to draw into another card. That is potentially helpful. We have some flexibility with Selective Mutation, yes. I don't think Catwitch or Saboteur is going to be our best card here when we also have damage from... Decker's Rock Slide. Okay, that does benefit from, from more movement with Dolblathana Sentry, but we don't have that much movement at the moment, actually, strangely enough. So why don't we say swap around Cat School Adept for Gezras? Okay, so that was probably the best card that we just drew into. So we are still a little bit low on the movement. We have cards that benefit when others get moved, because we have a couple of the Dolblathana Sentries. You can move. But it moves every card with it, and we want to get other cards out there first. We could certainly play you early, but again, this is another card that benefits from having lots of cards out there. So I think what we want to do here is actually we might want to go with Selective Mutation. That'll allow us to draw into a card with Adrenaline. And what do we want? We could go for... I do like the Cat Witchers a lot. I think they're, in many ways, sort of the, the staple of this deck. Then we can get rid of a card, put it back in our deck. As good as the Double Thunder Sentries are, I think that we just don't quite have enough movement or didn't have enough movement to see the greatest benefit out of them. Could potentially swap something else out, but we still have one in our hand, so I think that'll be fine. We'll end our turn here. And we also get the chance to spawn the couple of Witcher students by playing Selective Mutation, which gives us a little bit more to work with here. Because we have cards like, say, Keton, which will move other cards with it. So having more out there would be beneficial. Let's see what our opponent has in mind here. Okay, so Eskel will continue to get boosted. The longer he stays out there, the better he becomes. But it needs to be in the melee row? Alright, well, I think we know what we're going to do to that then. We could use our leader ability to move it. That is one way to make it happen relatively quickly. The best way would likely be to throw out something like a Malena and just immediately move both of them. We don't have her in our hand right now. We could potentially make it happen, though, if we drew into her with Dandelion, which is, of course, maybe wishful thinking. Let's see if we can make it happen here. We did not. We drew into a Cat Witcher Adept, which means we may, in fact, want to go with our leader ability here. Let's play Dolblathana Sentry, because I think we will start doing the movement, and we want to put you, at least for now, maybe, in the melee row, because I think we are going to do plenty of movement here on the opponent's side. There we go. And we only need two of them. So that was aggressive from a leader ability standpoint, but I think we have now shut down our opponent a lot because unlikely for them to have movement and they have just outright forfeited from that. So there you have it. The quickest win ever. Maybe not quite, but aggressive plays at the beginning, shutting off what was going to be our opponent's setup there with Leo Pathfinder. All right, so this time we will also be going against Scoia'tael. And I do think we will see a lot of the movement decks from Scoia'tael. It does seem as though they've gained a lot of popularity very quickly. We did see how effective they can be early on in a game in their previous match, but see what we can do here in a bit of a mirror match. So I don't think we want Polly. I think Dryad Matron is a great combination with Triant 4, so I like that. We do have Melina, which is perhaps our most aggressive mover. And we have a couple of Cat Witchers, so we can deal a lot of damage when we get moved. I still think that... Cat Witcher Adept is maybe one of our weaker units, so let's switch that around. Double Thanos Sentry, this time we have lots more movement, so I think this will work quite well. And then we might even be able to get rid of Becker's Rock Slide. Okay, and we get the Cat Witcher Mentor. What do we want to lead off with here? And we even have Onirbansi, I didn't even catch that, so we can play any card we'd like with that. 
So, hmm. I think maybe what we do here is we'd like to get the Dolbothana sentries out there as early as possible, so that, that way we benefit from all the future movement that we'll have. We just need to anticipate, are we going to be doing the movement on our side, or is our opponent going to be doing more of the movement? I think the answer is, it's going to be a lot of both. So, why don't we... Let's go for melee. And I'm deliberately going to use our tactic on the weaker of the two, because we want to try to keep these out here. The longer they're out here, the more we will benefit from them, of course. And we'll see what our opponent has in mind. Because yes, they likely have a very similar deck. We don't know with their hand, what cards they have right now, or how they will choose to play those cards. We're going with a bit of a long-term strategy, playing the Dolbothana Sentries now. Hoping that we'll have a lot more movement in the future. Whereas they could potentially sprint things out a bit. And beat us to the punch by playing quickly. And that could be the case here a bit with Dunka. However, she can only use her deal 3 damage ability when she is in the melee row. She will continue to boost a random score tell unit in their hand even if she is in the range row, because then they won't be able to use their ability and that will continue to trigger. But that might still be beneficial to move it. So we could do something like play Milena now and make the movement happen right away. And I'm thinking that might be what we go for here. It's not a perfect counter because Dunka will still be able to do that boosting in their hand, but I think we take it. Especially when these double found the sentries will deal a couple of damage, one apiece at least, and that gets rid of one of the Dunkas. So I think we have done a pretty good job of shutting off an early setup from our opponent, and now they're doing something similar here. They might even move their unit back into the melee row. No, they're moving our double found the sentries. I mean, that's fine. That can work. We could also move them back if we really wanted to. So, huh. This could be an interesting chess match of moving things back and forth. But I think we are out front a little bit here because we've already gotten the chance for these double the sentries to get boosted and deal some damage. And we have our Melenas out here too. So we could say, I'm wondering, we go Cat Witcher, deal some damage every turn and we could put you in the melee row so that when you switch into the range row, deal some damage there. That might not be a bad idea. Treant Boar and Dryad Matron are other cards that we want to try to get out pretty early, but I think we lead off with the Cat Witcher. Let's do this, and then, oh, we could have even played them in the range row, move them into the melee row. Hmm. We move you two back. Try moving you two back. At least to get some boosts. And they will move, and I was hoping it would take out one of the Milenas, but I suppose, you know, if we can finish off any of these cards, really, it would be beneficial. But it doesn't matter much which row our units are in right now. Whereas it does for our opponent, at least with Dunka. So in that way, we are a little bit more flexible. And yes, now they get out the Dolbothana sentries. Although, I think we certainly benefited from getting ours out as early as we did. Because we had the chance to boost and deal damage with them. Whereas, well, there you have it. Theirs are just getting destroyed immediately. So now, yep, they'll try moving ours. But they played theirs in the range row, which means that they're boosting themselves when they get moved. They don't deal damage when they move. So we have our split. One in the melee, one in the range row. I think that's fine. We could say, hmm. I think we might want to move our Cat Witchers back into the melee row. So that at the end of the turn, they'll move back to the range. And then that means they will deal damage to range. And might be able to take someone out. We could even get even more Cat Witchers out there and go crazy on the movement. And I kind of like that idea. Let's do it. We'll do some of that. We'll use this. And this. And we'll boost them a little bit from this double Thomas Sentry. And this double Thomas Sentry will be, yeah, continuing to deal damage when they move themselves. Which hopefully will still continue to happen every once again. But with four Cat Witchers moving, we'll be dealing lots of damage here. And we'll be boosting them every time they do move back. And so, even after we pass, you'll see it'll take a little while for all the the effects to take place, but I think we have already done a good job here of getting to an early, sizable lead. It just seems like our opponent is doing many of the same things as us, but they're a step behind. And that has led to us being able to deal lots of damage to them and cut off some of their setups. So, let's see. They tried to move our Dolbothana sentries into the range row where they could boost. 
which is not a bad thing, but I think we have benefited a lot from being able to just outright destroy many of their units by going a more damage-oriented route. But we could also do that by switching our Cat Witchers back into the melee row and then having them switch into the range row and deal damage to the range row at the end of our turn. At this point, though, we do have a sizable enough lead that I would not necessarily rule out passing at this stage. Our opponent would need to play, I would think, several cards if they wanted to pass us. But I think what we do here is we actually go for... We're going long-term. It is actually beneficial to move Dolbaton of Sentries back into the melee row, and then that will be, in total, more damage. But short-term, the more immediate damage is to move the Cat Witchers. I think we're not going to have much more time. I think this round is not going to last much longer, so let's go with the short-term play. Oh, we do still need to play something. No. <laughs> Throw that out. I forgot. <laughs> so these get boosted by the number of cards in a row. I think we threw it out in a row that had the same number of units as the other row, but it will now also get boosted whenever we play a unit. Once we have four cards or less, we're not quite there yet. But uh, in the interest of not having to burn a card from forgetting that, yeah, you do have to play a card in your turn. That was probably still... Uh, Necessary in many ways. Okay, so yes, they are continuing to use Cat Witchers themselves. But because we have four Cat Witchers out compared to their three, one of which has only one life at the moment, we may be able to, we should be at the moment at least, dealing far more damage than them and having much more sustainability in our setup. You did take out one of our Molinas, which is unfortunate. That does limit our flexibility with our movement. It does put us on even terms in that regard. But let's see, now that you do have some cards in melee and some cards in range, it's not a bad thing to keep our Cat Witchers where they are. Except now, I think, is probably the time when we move a Dolbathana Sentry into the melee row. And, hmm, what if we were to use this, move an enemy from the right to the left, and that could guarantee that we destroy this Cat Witcher here? I'm thinking we go for that. Again, at this point, I mean, we would have wanted to have passed previously, because uh, when we use our abilities, we need to play a card, but I think probably at the end of this turn, we could strongly consider passing. We're also starting to get our rows fairly crowded, which will prevent our Cat Witchers from hopping from one row to the other if they get completely full. So I'm thinking we probably will pass after this does depend a little bit on what our opponent opts to do, but that is a late Sage play. That's another card that you probably do want to play early so that you can benefit from playing a bunch of special units in the future. Though I suppose, I'm not sure they've played any special cards at the moment, so, huh. Maybe that hasn't been much of a factor yet. We do still have over a 40-point lead here, and we do have some passive damage and passive boosting at the moment with our Cat Witchers jumping from row to row and getting boosted and dealing damage in the process. So... I'm thinking we do pass here, and it will be very difficult for our opponent to catch us. If they want to, then it should take many cards in which to do it. And therefore, yeah, if we, especially if we could destroy one of their cat witchers, and they only have one now, so this would be a difficult catch, and that is an extremely strong card, yes. That is the card that we probably will opt to use when we have Oniromancy, but is it strong enough to still take a round here when we pass early? Well, we got rid of one of them with our damage, so that certainly helps. Adrenaline Junkie. I wonder if that's uh, an ability we get from movements, because certainly still doing a lot of that. As you saw there, we have already passed, but those are just all the Cat Witchers getting moved and getting boosted and dealing damage when that happens. Uh, okay, you dealt a lot of damage to us, yes, but just look at the card total here. We still have a huge lead, and we have four cards remaining, whereas our opponent only has two. Now they pass, but see, look at that. They've wasted more cards and still did not win the round. So that just gives us card advantage in rounds two and three. So I think in many ways, what we did there was like we were saying before, we just beat our opponent to the punch, did the moves that they wanted to do first. So we had the advantage. And here is our own Gezrus. So you saw at least a little bit there how powerful it can be when there is a bunch of cards out there to get boosted and deal damage to. But can we make that happen now? I think that Dryad Dragoon is one of our weaker cards because this is only deployability, so it happens once and then stops. Cat Witcher Saboteur is also not one of my favorites. We do still have this combo, which is nice. We could deliberately pass early here and just have a huge card advantage going into the next round, but 
we already have a good card advantage here. We have seven compared to our opponent's five. I just wish we had a little more units out there, things like all of our Cat Witchers, in order to benefit even more from Gezras. We do have Oniromancy. Let's just check what would we theoretically look to play with that. And the answer would be maybe Stiga Castle, maybe Gaetan, maybe even Dandelion to get ourselves another card. What if we do that? Let's play Oniromancy, because of course we'll create a copy of it, because it has Echo. So we'll, uh, we'll be able to use it next round as well. So we play Dandelion. I'm not sure it matters which row we put him in. Draw into... Okay. Yeah. Cat Witcher Mentor, probably not what we were looking for. Let's get the Dryad Matron out here. I think we'll set up this plus the Preant for as early as we can. And when there are two of these Dryad Matrons out there, they will move to the right. One of them will, and then the other one will as well. So they'll boost each other in the process. Okay, but now you're dealing damage. Okay, by five, removing one of these, which does get rid of that synergy a bit, and boosting a Scoia'tael unit in your hand. You did have a Dunka that you played early in the previous round, so in theory, you do have, probably, a unit in there that has been boosted a fair bit. I think we saw that when you played Gezra's, they were boosted a bit, so that might have been one of the cards, but you may still have another card in your hand that's loaded up a bit. So I think we can still make this happen. And does it matter which row we play you in? I'm going to play you in the melee row now. Because that way, at least some of them will get boosted by Dryad Matron. I suppose we could have moved you back. We probably should have. We only would have gotten this one boost, but... I think once again, though, we have a bit of a setup here. Ready to go, whereas our opponent... Sure, you can play the Dobothana Sentry. That is the beginning of a setup, what we of course did in the previous round. But it may just, again, be the case of too little too late. You needed to get that out earlier than you did. And is it early enough? Or is it late enough to play Gesras? We could certainly try. When we move from melee to range, we boost. When we move from range to melee, we deal damage. So I wonder if we go for... I think we go start in range here. Try to get some damage out there. Oh, and yep, every time we move here, we will get damaged. Hmm. Does mean this card would go down if we are to move. In fact, oh, Gezras, this one at least would get destroyed when he moves at the end of this round, which is unfortunate. We would keep this one here. I think we still end, or we could even, hold on, use our leader ability. Can we get the other one as well? Because now those Zolbothana sentries are boosting our, al our opponent's units, except they don't have any units to boost with, so we should have done that before we even move our boars here. Okay, but now you create more of them. Sure. We did successfully get rid of one of them, and we could do the same thing we did before and move one of them back into the range row to delete this. You do still have some damage out here. Let's see. What is the best order of operations? We could... I think we destroy one of them with a Becker's Rock Slide. Let's do that to... It shouldn't matter between this and this. Let's get rid of you. Then let's move you with our leader ability. Now we will only take one damage when we move units around. So this is safe. You actually get healed before you take damage. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was going to be the case. Good to know the order of operations, though. So we can deal damage like this. And you will also take damage in the process, but you'll get healed from this. And, oh, okay, yep, the damage ultimately was enough to take out are weaker of the two Gezras. But I think we have enough strength out here right now, and we still have card advantage. So, even though you have been able to destroy some of our units, I think you're still going to find that uh, we are able to outpace you here. Let's see, we are close to being able to destroy this card, but not quite. This would deal two damage to it. Drop you down to one. Is there any other way for us to eke out one damage? And reset with Geralt, which is actually helpful in our own row here. That might be beneficial. And then we could use Bleed on the Catwitcher Adept, which would be enough to make it happen. So maybe we lead off with the Catwitcher Adept here in the melee row. Do this. And then follow up with damage here. And between those things, that'll be enough damage. We won't... Well, actually, we will heal when we play our Treant 4, so we should still make that movement now. Ooh, okay. Yeah, did get rid of our healer there, but still, we did get rid of 
until the final century, and so now our opponent has conveniently lost connection when they had one card remaining and they were down 20-something to three. Yes, so victory here, because our opponent disconnected, air quotes. There you can see we are capable of boosting ourselves and dealing lots of damage very quickly, even in a mirror type of matchup, so that was a lot of fun. Okay, so now it'll be Scoia'tael, except they do not have the ability to move their cards around, at least not their leader ability, so this may not be as much of a mirror matchup this time. They're going for Precision Strike instead. And we have Gezros of Leda, which is always one of, if not our very best card, so that's a good thing to see. Gaetan, Cat Witchers, those could all work well in tandem. Riot Matron, we saw those can boost each other very effectively. We can combine that with, oh, something like a Dobothana Sentry. That is certainly good to play that early. Still, the Cat Witcher Adept is probably one of, if not our worst cards here. So let's get rid of that. Cat Witcher Mentor is not that much better. Oniromancy gives us a ton of flexibility, so that's great. We go first, so I think we do go with Dobothana Sentry. Because the earlier we get it out, the more movement we have, the more we benefit. Let's play it. We need to think about if we want to go offensively or defensively. Deal damage or boost ourselves with it. I think we want to deal damage. Try to shut off our opponent. So let's do this. We'll boost this one. Try to keep it out there. Because Scoia'tael does have a fair bit of damage here. So several cards that can deal five damage. This one might not be safe. This one I'm hoping will be. Okay. Leading off with a trap. So that is likely either one that deals 5 damage, or it could be one that deals damage to everything on our side based on the provision costs of the next unit that we play. So this is a little bit tricky because we don't have anything with higher than 5 strength, which means that if it is the trap that deals 5 damage, then it will just outright destroy whatever we play. But if we play a card that is on the strong side, like say Gezros, and it has 12 provision costs, then we are going to destroy everything if it is the trap that deals damage based on the provision cost. So I think we want to just play one of our weaker cards here, like say Cat Witch or Mentor. And if it goes down, it goes down. But it has a low enough provision cost with five that if it is the other one of the traps, then it's not the end of the world. Let's see what it is. No, it is not the one that I anticipated. In that case, it is probably the one that deals two damage to every unit in the row that has the most units, which is going to be hard for us to play around but at least is not quite as much of an immediate threat. If we had known that, of course we couldn't have known that, but if we'd known that, might have deliberately tried to load up on damage earlier on with something like a Cat Witcher, so that we could have destroyed just about any card that they play here. Going with Milan, and that's four damage. Yeah, it is. This one that deals two damage to everything in a row. Does get rid of a reasonable amount of our cards here, but we do still have one Double Tona Sentry remaining. So it is helpful, yes. And now I think we can load up on the Cat Witchers, because at least for the moment, it is safe to play them. And I don't think we need to do any of our leader ability movements here. We will want to try to get these Dried Matrons out early, and maybe even Gezras. Similar with Gaetan, but play it by ear here a bit. And those cards were not doing anything on the playing field, because it was all a deployability that was dealing that damage, so it wasn't a huge deal to get rid of them now, but it is, of course, damage, and our one strength Cat Witcher is, of course, vulnerable, so we'd like for it to stick around so that we can load up on even more damage and get more benefits every time things move, but our opponent may have other ideas. Yeah, Dwarf Berserker can deal some damage. It is random. And, oh, unfortunately did randomly target our weaker Cat Witcher, so that goes down. We are technically still in the lead here, but we don't quite have the great setup that we we're hoping we might have at this stage. So let's see, we could get Dried Matrid out early and benefit from getting boosted from it, yes. With the Cat Witcher jumping back and forth between rows, and that could be something that continues to trigger the Dried Matron. Otherwise, hmm, we could delete something. Like, cut off the damage from the Dwarf Berserkers with the Rock Barrage? I think we stick with the Dryad Matron for now. And we'll 
We could even use our leader ability to cut them off, deal damage that way, but I think we stick with this. And it may not be the best possible setup. We could play a little bit more aggressively if we were to use something like our leader ability. But I'm trying not to overcommit too much here because I'm not certain that we are going to be able to win round one. So we'll see how our opponent reacts to this. They obviously have not been going for the same setup as us. Okay, they do have this card with a strong deployability. When they can destroy a card with one damage, it gives them a five point boost and shield. We do not have our Geralt Yurden to reset cards in a row, but we do have Oniromancy, so bear that in mind. We could play any card that we'd like from our deck if there's something that we feel like could bail us out here. Elena is certainly our best way to maximize the number of units moving around every turn. When we have a Dolbathana Sentry, that can be a great setup. But I wonder, I mean, ideally we would have multiple Dolbathana Sentries out there. It's not ideal, but is it good enough that it's still worthwhile? Or we could load up on all the Dryad Matrons in the world and play them in the same row and watch them boost each other. Maybe we try that. Although, uh, we do want to be moving our opponents, though, with Dolbathon Sentry in the melee row. Maybe, tell you what, we'll do this. And we will use one round of leader ability to move you into the range row. So now we are boosting ourselves when we get moved. The idea here being that we're going to be doing a lot of this in the melee row. New plan, boost ourselves rather than focus on the damage. Not initially what I was thinking we'd focus on, but we do have that flexibility to shift gears. So we'll see if that changes how our opponent reacts, because they were certainly going with the damage. Okay, so we did play one more card, and we did use one round of our leader ability, but we will take round one here. So, bit of a mixed bag. Was it worthwhile for us to invest that much in round one? That was kind of what I was saying is, wasn't sure we wanted to do too much to go overboard here, but we did still hold on to Oniromancy, Gezros. So we have some good cards remaining. But we will be at a slight card disadvantage here. Drew into Geralt. As well as Catwitcher Saboteur and Polly. Thinking we probably want to get rid of either of these guys. And we want to just get more units out there for Gesras to work with. Selective Mutation could help us draw into additional cards. Do the Catwitchers have Adrenaline? They do. Okay. So I do like them a lot. So I think that might be what we do with this one here. Let's switch out Polly, and we get back into a Catwitcher Saboteur. So why don't we play Selective Mutation, draw into a Catwitcher, and then get rid of Catwitcher Saboteur. And if nothing else, what we've done here is we have optimized our hand a little bit more for round three, and we could potentially even pass here and just take the round two loss and go into round three with a total of 10 cards and not be a card disadvantage there because Catwitcher is a great card. So for them to use one here in round two might be overkill. I'm definitely leaning toward passing here. Of course, we could have played Oniromancy, played a card of our choosing from our deck, and then have the Echo copy of Oniromancy show up in round three, but it doesn't really matter here because we're mostly just trying to optimize our hand for round three and we still have Oniromancy, just the original copy if we pass now. So I think we do that. We hand our opponent round two. That's fine. Mostly just wanted to make sure that we weren't going into round three with a disadvantage. Other thing we could have done was maybe play the location because that does have resilience. We would lose out a little bit because there is still a deployability that goes with it. So we wouldn't be getting all the benefit from it if we had played that as our one card in round two there. But certainly could have been an option. Okay, let's see what else we get. Dandelion, I like that. Brahan, if we do have the ability to get the card we want on the opponent's side in the rightmost spot using something like our leader ability or something like Melena, then I think that would be great. We could get Melena with Oniromancy. Uh, and we draw into Polly here. Let's just think about what Oniromancy would be best for. Potentially Melena, maybe even a Dolbathana Sentry early to set everything up and get boosted or deal damage with it. Becker's Rock Slide if we wanted to Hit our opponent hard if they play something really strong here that we feel like we must destroy. That's also an option. They go first, though. So we can react here. They're going with... Hmm. Armor. Interesting. Will make it hard for us to deal damage. Potentially very hard for us to deal damage. But like we started doing in round one, 
we have a bit of flexibility here. We don't necessarily need to have our movement focus on dealing damage. We can have our movement focus on healing and boosting ourselves instead. That might be what we go for here. I'm thinking we lead off with Dandelion Poet, see what we draw into, and take it from there. We get... Mm, Catwitcher Mentor is probably not one of our preferred answers to that. We could play Catwitcher early. That way they start hopping around and start dealing damage. But like I said, the damage at this stage is not doing too much for us. Maybe we even... Hmm. Play Stick a Castle. Let's do this. And we might even use it to make Catwitchers. Yeah, let's do it. And they'll hop from melee to range row, deal a little bit of damage in the process, but still going to be hard to break through that wall of defenses. We will have another round of Cat Witchers that we can play. And once we get all of those out, then I'm thinking that Gezros starts making a lot more sense. And then once we do that, then we might do Gaetan. Okay. That is a card we probably want to destroy as soon as possible. Or move to the other row. Because it needs to be in the range row to do its thing. So I'm thinking we use possibly even both of our leader charges for this. Unless we want to find another way to move a card. Could be Polly. That could save us at least one charge for our leader ability. Or, hmm. Could. Oh, actually, Rock Barrage. Oh, it was not. Yeah, we have Rock Barrage in our hand. We have Decker's Rock Slide in our deck. So we have a few ways in which to move these cards now. I think we go for that and save a little bit or wait a little bit to play our other units. So let's get rid of you and move you and then we want to use our order. I think we can wait on that. This will deal damage to you, but your order ability is useless now. So we have done a fair bit now, I think, to shut off our opponent. We have a little bit of a, a sustainable engine set up here with the Cat Witchers. They are a little bit weak at the moment, because one of them is still on just one strength. Okay. More traps. So again, let's see, we've seen them use one that dealt two damage to every card in a row. You can have multiple of those in your deck, so there could be another one. And when we have this many units lined up in one row, they might have been eyeing that as a good opportunity. Of course, these Cat Witchers are going to move. It could alternatively be the one that deals 5 damage to the next unit that you play, in which case, Polly would survive that. That would be our only card that would. Although, at this point, we don't really have any specific cards that we want to move, because we were focusing on Pavko earlier, and now we have moved him where we want him to be. So, maybe we do what we did last time we saw one of these cards, and play a Cat Witcher Mentor, just because we don't like them very much, and so it would be a way to keep ourselves relatively safe. So why don't we do that? Okay, and then our order ability moves three allied units to the other row. We could do that on something like a Cat Witcher. Except I think that only works, the damage with the Cat Witchers only works when it's technically their own movement that is getting triggered. Let's see, this hasn't triggered yet. Going with a Dwarf Berserker. We saw them use this earlier, I think for some damage. And if you take out, yeah, it is the one that deals two damage to everything in the row there. So we survived with our Cat Witchers. We lost a Cat Witcher Mentor. I think that's fine. It was our weaker of the Cat Witcher Mentors anyway. But if we can find a way to shut these off, that would be great. That is easier said than done. We could destroy the rightmost unit in a row with five or more units. This currently has four. That doesn't quite work. We could get more Cat Witchers out there, which I think is probably what we do here. Either that or we could own Neuromancy, and if we were to do that, ooh, we could get either Melina or the Doblethana Sentry out there. Either one would be nice to get early. Ooh. Let's actually, let's get a Doblethana Sentry with Oniromancy, because I think we are still going to be doing a lot of movement. So if we either... Yeah, I think we want to play in Range Row as boost ourselves. Yeah. Let's get you in the Range Row. We'll boost ourselves, because like I was saying before, when our opponent is focusing on the damage, then it is certainly a lot easier for us to be focusing on boosting ourselves, because otherwise, uh, 
well, that's a way to keep ourselves alive. And also, they're loading up on some armor, so dealing damage is easier said than done. So it's a, a bit of a strange setup our opponent has here. Oftentimes, you'll see people go 100% dwarves and just focus entirely on the armor. But they have a combination of dwarves and humans like Pavko Gale. I mean, I suppose he's damage, so are the dwarf berserkers. But now you do have five units or more in this row, except that would be deleting the miner, which is not really the one that we want to be deleting. So, huh. I think now is where we play more Cat Witchers, and we could potentially split them a bit from between the two rows. And then I think we play Gezras, and then maybe Gaetan. Well, we actually do want to have as many cards in one row as possible for Gaetan. We just don't want to crowd out this row so much that there's no more room for movement, which we are getting kind of close to that, to tell you the truth. That's a bit of a risk here. Cat Witchers, yes, are capable of taking out those units that don't have any armor remaining, but some of them is still going to be hard to break through, like the Dwarf Berserkers. But we are still going to get boosted every time we do that movement. That's why I wanted to make sure we got the double bonus sentries out there. Perhaps even could have done so earlier, but we were trying to avoid things like the trap just in case. And we weren't sure what exactly those were going to do. We could also use our Stiga Castle to move three units, and now that we have the Double Planet Sentries, we can benefit a lot from that. Okay, so you are destroying one of our Cat Witchers using a Cat Witcher Saboteur. Not bad. And your damage is taken out. I mean, honestly, you take out anything in the melee row, that's fine. But now... Hmm. Now you still have one, two, three, four, five units here. We could play Brahan and destroy this Dwarf Berserker. It doesn't have a lot of strength itself, but it is continuing to deal damage. Which is a little bit frustrating because we don't want this double thumb sentry to go down. That would be problematic. So we could limit your damage a bit by getting rid of it. And it is going to continue to get armor from the wagon bird. So that's not a bad idea. Hmm. It's just if we could delay a little bit and go with Gezros instead, maybe we do Gezros, play you in the melee row, then you'll hop back into the range row and boost the double thought of sentries that way. That might be a, a more, a better long-term strategy. And let's see. I think we're safe for now as well. I mean, maybe, could argue, using our leader ability, move the weaker of the two Gezros to give it a little bit of a boost could be helpful, but it is going to get boosted from the two double thought of sentries, so that'll help keep it alive here. It's just this double thought of sentry is not doing any movement itself, so it is the most vulnerable. But I think that move right there, now that we have our Gezrosses out, is certainly going to do a lot to help us out. Yeah, and they have their leader ability that they probably should have used earlier to get rid of our Double Planet Sentry, at least the weaker of the two. Because it had already done a ton of boosting, and you could have shut that off far earlier if you had used that ability. Okay, so you get out more damage with the Elven Sword Masters. That is definitely your setup is just any and all forms of damage. So let's see. That needs to be in the melee row, though. We do have one round of our leader ability, so we could shut it off with these two by moving one of them that way. We also have Polly. Polly can move you to the range row as well. That could work, too. Though, if we want to destroy a Dwarf Berserker, we would want to do that before moving anything to the range row, because whatever we move to the range row will take the rightmost spot, and that will become Rayhan's target. So, hmm. Aton could also give us some damage here. Move the other cards from this row to the other row. Damage random enemy unit for each card moved. It's random, so it's not targeted. That is tough. I think for that reason, we do want to play Brahen now. Let's do this. We'll destroy you. Create a copy of Brahen. Doesn't matter much. And we could even move... Uh, well, we'll wait on those. But we do want to use this some, at some point. And we will get cards boosted when we do the movement. Not quite as much as we were getting before. But I was thinking maybe our, our Gezrosses. Just to make sure this one stays alive, because this is important that he does stay alive. But we're starting to build on this lead here. Because we are doing a lot of boosting now every turn. And even with the three Cat Witchers remaining, that's a decent amount of damage every turn too. So I think at this point it's going to be very difficult for our opponent to keep pace, let alone catch up with us. Geralt Yerdin would be painful in the range row right about now, and yeah, you might be looking to destroy that Gezros, and certainly could with that. So that would have been one of the reasons why boosting it a little bit further with something like our leader ability 
or using the Sigga Castle ability could have been beneficial because you are certainly going to use the Brockalon Sentinel to destroy it now. That was a good play, except, again, our opponent probably should have done it earlier because the earlier you had done it, the more you would have shut us off. You let it stick around for a little while and we got a ton of value out of it. That was... What did you just destroy there? The other brand? That's fine. Just the deployability, so it's already done its thing. So, that was certainly a strong play from our opponent. They are now out of leader abilities, whereas we are not. And I think now that we have destroyed that card that we wanted to destroy in the range row, it's probably safe to play Polly and move one of you to the range row to prevent you from doing your damage in the future. You're running out of room in the range row. And this will just, what, give us armor, which is not a huge deal. I mean, could have helped us get additional armor on some of our weaker units, like the other Gesseras. Keep it a little bit safer, but... Finland pretty good about what we have going on right now. And in fact, our opponent says the same thing. You know, not sure we're going to be able to catch it here. There you have it. They forfeit. And Scoyatel movement, three for three. All opponents forfeiting because they knew that they would not be able to catch us. So there's a look at a Scoyatel movement deck using all the new Way of the Witcher movement themed cards. Does it live up to the hype? With three convincing victories like that? I'd argue maybe it does. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below to let me know what you think of the new Scoyatel setup here with the movement abilities. Is it the new meta? Thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you next time.